really, really good news for those of you who own an EV, which is not a Tesla. Tesla has just revealed its membership pricing to its superchargers. And frankly, considering I'm soon to be the owner of a non-Tesla EV, I'm pretty excited. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Electric Viking, great to see you. Fortunately, today my voice has improved a little bit, and I'm so stoked to be back making videos for you all. This is the pretty much first thing I saw in my news feed today from multiple different sources, and I had a look at it and I realized this is actually awesome news. Tesla has launched supercharger membership packages for non Tesla EV owners, and yet. Yeah, it's a way better deal than what you get from other supercharger networks. And the Tesla supercharger network is the best network. In other words, it's like the best premium network just said, yeah, we'll give you it cheaper. That's pretty cool. So Tesla has launched a membership program and package for those people who own electric vehicles that are not Teslas. And this membership package has two parts to it. The first part is pay per use. You pay as you go and as you use the supercharged network. The second is a 99 cents per month membership with access to the supercharged network at a lower price per kilowatt hour. So it's a no brainer. You pay $1 per month. I think this is genius. I think Tesla's plan, right? Used to literally get hundreds of millions of people using this network eventually. I mean, I know this is not going to happen overnight, but give it 10 years. Imagine they have 100 million people using this network per month. At a dollar, maybe they maybe they increase the rate to two dollars, right? They get you sucked in. You you're like a dollar per month. Who cares? It's nothing. Then they say, oh, it's actually two dollars per month now. And all of a sudden, hundred million subscribers becomes two hundred million dollars per month, purely for subscription, not even for using it. It's nothing, right? For you, it's two dollars to get a cheaper rate. For Tesla, it's two hundred million dollars a month. That is a lot of money. And guess what? There is no other automaker in the world who comes close to being able to achieve this, right? Do we still call Tesla just a car maker now with this option? Do we still call Tesla just a car maker? I mean, when they have this battery coming online in California, enabling them to be an energy provider, and also when they're planning on doing the same thing in many other countries around the world, I don't think so. For every Tesla account, you'll be limited to one of the two memberships. You will be able to access the screen in your Tesla account and choose which one you want. I think one US dollar, it's actually 99 cents, is insanely low, but it's a brilliant strategy because everyone, every man and his dog is going to go, yep, sign me up. I'll pay a dollar a month. That's nothing. For Tesla, though, it's going to add up to a lot of money. Oh, now... There's a lot of people saying that they think it's too cheap. In fact, a lot of people who own Tesla are saying it should be $10 per month. That would be more fair. But personally, I think it's genius. Elon Musk is one of the most intelligent marketers in the history of marketing. The dude, I think, is more skilled at marketing than any other marketer that I've ever known. I studied marketing. I worked in marketing industry for many years. And he destroys my marketing ability by a million miles. But the loss leader strategy, that's what's called when you charge a very, very small amount to get lots of subscribers in the loss leader strategy, 99 cents, getting people into the program, into the system is genius. It's brilliant. Charge them 99 cents at the start. Maybe you increase it to 2 or $3 later on. It's nothing, right? People get used to paying it. And then what happens is Tesla can slowly increase the price just a little bit, but they don't need to increase it a lot because remember, not only are people paying you a subscription, they're also paying you to use your petrol pumps, your gas pumps, your electricity pumps, of course, I'm really talking about. So Tesla becomes one of the world's biggest gas suppliers. But you know what I mean, right? One of the biggest service stations, gas stations, electric vehicle stations. So all of a sudden, all these people using Shell or Ampol or BP or whoever the hell else they're using, all of a sudden, they slowly transition to using 
Tesla. Service provided $1 or $2 per month for nothing. They may never even use it. Or they come in and they pay their $2 or a dollar per month and they pay for electricity. And guess what else they do? They pay for some snacks. They buy a couple of drinks. They buy a couple of coffees. Who knows what else? Maybe they'll sit in a lounge, pay for play some video games. Maybe they'll do something else. Pay to use a swimming pool. You've seen the swimming pool, right? Yeah. You get my point here. Tesla can make money upon money upon money. Maybe they can show you some videos on how Tesla vehicles are superior to your non-Tesla branded EV. Give you some ways in which Tesla vehicles are better. Market to you. So, Tesla's membership and charging. Well, after making the first part of this video, the 99 cent fee has now changed, right? It's changed as a feature. And maybe it could be because Tesla made a mistake on this US $1 feature. I don't know. But I can't see the feature on the app anymore for the one or the 99 cent monthly charge. So who knows? We'll see. I'll update this video in future if this is changed on the Tesla app. I'll let you know. However, someone on Twitter has done a rough calculation on what Tesla's done here. And here are the figures. If Tesla collect five cents per kilowatt hour from all the wall connectors charging Tesla and non-Tesla vehicles in the USA and Europe, then that would make 250 million US dollars per year. Now, of course, current Tesla owners, you are probably concerned. I understand that. You're probably thinking, well, is there going to be long wait lines at Tesla stalls? I'm going to guess that there will be in the short term. Short term pain, long term gain buy Tesla stock, then you won't have to suffer the pain as much as you see all these people who don't own Tesla EVs going to your beloved supercharger stations. And I totally understand where you're coming from. No one really wants to wait forever, do they? One of the big advantages of Tesla's network is you wait less on average than other networks. And the superchargers work better than other superchargers in other networks. So yes, your network could be affected by this for sure. But I believe Tesla is going to invest big, big money in increasing the number of supercharger stalls. They've gotten much more efficient at deploying them, at building them. Their costs are much lower than the competition. You've seen it, right? Apparently, their costs are about one-tenth of some of the competition's costs of deploying superchargers. That is insane. Now, if Tesla's costs are not even one-tenth, we've seen from Texas that number that was based on costs from other manufacturers. But if Tesla's costs are even only 50% lower than the competition, it means they can build out superchargers at a much faster rate and compete at an in an area in a way that just won't be possible for the competition. A 50% reduction in cost to set up more charges is a huge advantage. So that's what I'm trying to say here. There's going to be a lot of superchargers deployed over the next five years. Massive, massive numbers. I believe Tesla will become the new, whatever your country standard is, whatever your country gas stations are, that's going to become Tesla, ubiquitous in whatever country you're in for being the charging network that everyone uses. And Tesla will, well, they'll be aware that this is going to happen. They'll be aware that they need to build out more charges as quickly as humanly possible. So as you know, I am a Tesla investor. I mean, you know, big whoop, who cares? You're probably thinking I'm biased, so therefore I'm saying all this in a positive way about Tesla. But I have pointed out there are some negatives, right? There are some negatives for Tesla owners. I plan on buying a Tesla Model Y as soon as the M3P batteries are in that Model Y, which I believe is going to be the first quarter of 2023. So yeah, it will affect me as well. I will have to wait longer for people driving other EVs. But you know what? I don't care because frankly, this is massive. It's not just massive for Tesla shareholders, right? It matters for Tesla shareholders because it's another way that Tesla can make a lot of money from multiple revenue streams, not just from selling electricity. They can sell it from selling new snacks and drinks and all kinds of things, additional plug-in charges to adapt to your car, maybe electric car accessories, maybe an electric car batteries that you can use to jumpstart your electric car if you need to, like there's all kinds of things they can sell and market to you once they have you as part of their system, right? Part of their loop, closed loop. It's like an, it's like an Apple. This is like a brilliant move. It's sort of like Apple opening up iTunes to everyone, right? This is like the iTunes of the electric car world. It's genius. I love it. And frankly, I'm going to hold my Tesla shares. Even if all of you guys sell and the, sh the price crashes down again, I'm going to hold for the next 10 
years. Because I love what Tesla is doing right now. I love the batteries they're using, the LFP M3P batteries. I love their efficiencies, their scale, the fact that they've only got two models that they're really selling on mass. They get criticized for this, but it's genius. They're making more money than Toyota is, and Toyota's selling 10 times more cars, and yet they make more profit. What matters? Profits or number of cars you sell? Profits. This is another way for Tesla to increase their profit. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.